Hey folks, this is Kalani. As more and more players are hitting max level, I'm sure everyone is asking the same question. Now what? What is there to do at max and what should you get done first? That's what we're going to focus on in this video. There is a wide variety of content to take part in. It is easy to get lost, so let's break it all down and talk about what you should prioritize first, depending on what you want to do at endgame. Before we jump in, be sure to pop by our live stream sometime over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, and we always love chatting with you wonderful folks, so I hope to see you soon. The very first thing you want to do is finish the main story. If you don't finish the main story and complete the scenario at the end of Revendreth, you won't be able to pick a Covenant, which is the one big gate to everything you can do at Endgame. So finish your quests and then you need to pick a Covenant. A hard choice for sure, but something you cannot avoid. You can pick the one you like the look of, or the one which has the coolest ability in your mind, or you can look at what provides the best performance right now and just go with that. When you've picked your covenant, you need to progress through the max level story quests to unlock all of your features. You will see how anima works in your sanctum, see what upgrades you can invest into, see how to check your renown level and learn all about soulbinds and conduits. You will also have quests that introduce you to the more zone, to Torghast and to the calling system, so do all of that and unlock access to all of the end game systems. When you run out of story quests, you'll know you've got it all done. As for what you can actually do at max level, content-wise, there's quite a lot to keep you busy. I'm going to split this list into weekly objectives and daily objectives. Weekly stuff can be done throughout the week and be finished at any point. Just make sure it's done before the weekly reset. There are some massive bonuses for the weekly objectives, so they should be prioritized for the most part. Daily activities are just that, new stuff you can do each day with some nice rewards attached to them. On the list of weekly to-dos, one of the most important weekly activities is the Renown Quests. You will get two Renown Quests every week. The first week is a bit special. A story quest replaces one of the Renown Quests, but you still end up with two Renown total. And completing these quests will allow you to progress through your Renown rewards one at a time. One Renown Quest asks you to collect 1000 Anima for use in your Sanctum, and the other quest asks you to delve into the Moor and rescue a handful of souls. These two weekly quests are the only reliable source of renown unless you get significantly behind in the system, so completing them both each week allows you to stay on top of things and work towards some of those super cool renown rewards. The quest to recover souls is also the only way to acquire the redeemed souls currency, which is required for every single sanctum upgrade. So if you want to build the mission table or the fast travel systems or take part in your covenants mini game, you will have to do these quests for that as well. So make sure to get your renown quests done every week. And then we also have Torghast. Completing Torghast layers is the main source of Soul Ash, a currency required to craft legendary items. Soul Ash rewards are on a weekly loot lock, so you can only earn the Soul Ash from each layer once per week, and there is currently no catch-up on this specific loot and system. So if you want to craft your legendary items early, you will need to make sure you finish your Torghast runs each week. There are two wings of Torghast available every week, and right now we have access to three layers in each each wing. If you complete every layer available, you can earn 305 soul ash, and if you can do that in both wings, you get a total of 610 soul ash per week. If you manage to finish layer 3 in one section, you can actually skip straight to layer 3 in the other section, which will save you a good chunk of time. If legendary crafting is something you are interested in, make sure you clear as much of Torghast every week to maximize your soul ash gains. There are a few weekly objectives in the moor as well. Venari will offer up two quests per week, which are very quick to complete, but reward you with a huge chunk of Stygia, a special currency used to purchase very powerful upgrades from Venari, and a lot of reputation with Venari herself. If you do nothing else in the moor all week, be sure to at least get these two weekly quests done. The rewards you get for the time investment are huge, and you will definitely want some of the goodies that Venari offers, so reputation and Stygia are equally important. 
While you're down here though, you may as well complete the weekly event in the moor. Right now the weekly event is the Wrath of the Jailer and it can pop up in a few different places. The event is very straightforward, kill a bunch of mobs and then kill a mini boss. The event will reward you with a good chunk of Stygia, some Venari reputation and it has the chance to reward you with item level 183 loot. This event is going to be worth doing for the chance at gear alone and all of the rewards are weekly. So once per week, while you are down in the moor zone, check your map for the event and hop on over to get your loot. Over in Ouroboros, there are some interesting weekly quests that you might have missed. Downstairs, underneath the inn, you can find two brokers who offer weekly dungeon quests. These are super simple. Pick them up, queue for the dungeon that the quest is for, complete the quest, and hand them back into the brokers. Two dungeons a week should be super easy for almost everyone, and you get some nice rewards. Each quest will give you 175 anima and a choice of reputation. You can get a whopping 500 reputation for any of the four major zones reps, so if you really want to earn rep with a specific faction for a specific reward, these quests can help you in your goals. The anima reward is a nice touch too. There is also a weekly PvP quest in Ouroboros by the PvP vendors. This quest just needs you to earn honor in random battlegrounds, easy enough if you're into a spot of PvP, and completing that quest will reward you with 250 anima and 500 honor. Some nice rewards for a potentially quick weekly quest. I believe another weekly quest will pop up when we can earn conquest, but we'll have to wait and see. The last weekly activity on this list you might want to consider getting done is dungeons, specifically mythic dungeons. Right now, mythic zero dungeons reward some of the most reliable, highest item level gear in the game at 184. That's going to be a huge upgrade for almost anyone, and mythic dungeons seem to be a bit easier this time around. A lot of my guild members were heading straight into mythic dungeons with 151 crafted gear and having zero issues. Each mythic dungeon boss can only be looted once per week per character, so getting them all done before the weekly reset will give you the best chance of gearing up and it's the best source of gear we have before the raid comes out. With most of the weekly activities having great rewards, you'll probably want to make sure you get all of this done first. It's also really convenient that you can work on all of these weekly quests over the course of the week instead of being pressured to finish it all in one day. The renown on Torgas progress is key for main character progression and power, so be sure to get those done at the very least. And then we also have some daily activities you can do if you have some spare time. Callings would be one of the big ones. These are the new emissary quests. You get one new calling per day and they last for three days, so you can have up to three active at a time. Callings reward you with a lot of trash items to sell for quite a good chunk of raw gold. They give you a huge amount of rep, 1500 or 2000 depending on the calling, and they can contain high item level gear including conduits. I've been very lucky to get two different item level 184 conduits from calling boxes, so they're definitely worth it for the chance of gear. World quests are still a thing, though they aren't quite as mandatory as they used to be. World quests offer a variety of rewards, so you'll most likely just want to complete the world quests that you're actually interested in. They can reward anima, reputation, gear, conduits, gold, profession materials. It's a good mix, really. All of the world quests will also reward you with reputation for the zone you complete them in, so they're super good if you want to farm rep. Otherwise, just look for the rewards you want. The Anima World Quests are going to be the big ones for most players to upgrade their Sanctum, and it's one of the only really reliable sources of Anima, so World Quests are going to be useful for that. If you have free time, get some World Quests done. If you don't have the time, don't worry about it too much. There are also some daily quests down in the Moor Zone. These ones are not given by Venari, you have to go out and find them in the world. Thankfully they are marked on the world map for you, so just pop on over, pick up the quest, do whatever it wants you to do, and you'll earn some more Stygia and some more Venari rep. The rewards aren't as crazy as the weekly quests, but they are definitely going to add up, so they're still worth doing. You can spend a bit more time in the moor every day and farm rares, do bonus objectives and all that stuff until you reach Eye of the Jailer level 5 that will really maximize your rep and Stygia gains, but you can't continue after you hit level 5 on Eye of the Jailer. Your rep and Stygia earnings are reduced to zero and you start taking damage over time, so if you ever get to level 5 on that Eye of the Jailer system, get out of the moor and wait for the next day to go back. 
And then you will also want to pay at least some attention to some of your Sanctum features. Mission boards, for example, can give you some half-decent rewards, anima, gold reputation, and most of them last for 4 hours to 24 hours, so check your missions every day to make sure your champions are always hard at work. It looks like the mission table has a progression system on it, so it might end up giving some pretty big rewards later on down the line. Your Anima Conductor upgrade is also based on a daily cooldown when you get that built. You can channel Anima to one location every day. Each location will give you something different to do, like kill a new rare spawn or loot a new treasure. And the main reward from all of this is Grateful Offerings. This is a currency which is required for a lot of Covenant specific rewards. If you want to eventually buy any of your Covenant transmog sets, for example, you will need this currency, so channeling your conductor every day is going to be super important. Another factor here is that the Anima Conductor has a charge up feature. Every day that you use it, you gain a charge, and at 10 charges, you can actually use the conductor to make a connection permanent, which will allow you to unlock more and more rewards over time and earn more of those offerings as you upgrade your conductor. And that's the big list of what to do and what to prioritise, but remember that this is a game at the end of the day. Do what you want to do and do what you find fun. Shadowlands has so many little bits and bobs tucked away, so many treasures, so many rares, so many toys and mounts to collect. If you want to run around and collect as many mounts as you can, you do you. This is more of a list of what there is to do and what you can do if you're struggling to find a clear path at endgame, or if you just want to know what rewards you get from which activities so you can plan your week accordingly and decide what's worth it to you. Hopefully this video helped in that regard. So what are you currently working on in Shadowlands? Are you mount collecting, leveling up some alts, or are you keeping on top of all of these weekly and daily activities? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to come chat, hang out, maybe run a few dungeons with us, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now. And if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who subscribed on Twitch already and to our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun and as always I will see you next time.